الاستاذ الدكتور محمد كمال هيتكلم عن البيزكس اوف فليكسيبل يوتروس السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته خوش سعيد ان اتواجد النهارده ان شاء الله معاكم في الصبح بدري كده ونحاول يكون الكلام ان شاء الله ما ياخدش وقت كتير طبعا اني بيزك كورس شود ستارت ويز ويتش لانجويج ويز يو سبيك ويز لايك شود اي سبيك ان عربي ان انجلش فعشان الكلام يبقى تو ذا بوينت اعتقد ان احنا في التكنيكس وفي في التريننج كورسز المفروض نبقى نتكلم بالماذر لانجويج فهحتاج ابقى شيفت ما بين عربي تو انجلش So as a starting benefit for flexible uh, over semi-rigid, semi-rigid have been the, the gold standard for many, many years, being reusable forever, being a, a very good re-sterilized and wider channel, but still lacking two important things. One of them is maneuverability, and the other is reaching to the pelvic LCL system, the renal pelvis, and the proximal ureter in many cases. So the future have invented a solution, and what is the, the solution is the flexible. And What is good with the flexible is the deflection. So the most important part is that you are able to deflect the tip of the scope, either uh, active or passive deflection, but still you are reaching to 280 degrees of deflection that make you reach to the difficult places in the pelvic system, including calices and uh, pelvis. So how do you do deflection? Usually by wires attached to the liver. The wire is attaching to the tip of the scope and getting the tip of the scope up and down. So take care about these wires. It is not steel and they are going to be less durable if you are going to deflect your scope too much. So make the deflection less as much as you can. Again, the secondary deflection after the active one, which is bent of the segment just proximal to the point of active deflection. And this happens when you push your scope with your uh, other dominant, non-dominant hand. So what will be the drawbacks of using the flexible? It is the flexibility, and the flexibility is against to be introduced easily inside the aorta like the semi-rigid. You know, like the semi-rigid, it's too easy to introduce inside the aorta, but not the flexible one. And this is what you need for using an axis sheath, and also another drawback is uh, expensive equipment. So how we start doing flexible, as it is a teaching course, you are starting with a position, like starting position, it's better to have a general anesthesia, your patient breathing movement would be uh, very disturbing for you during chasing a stool inside the kidney. So as much as you can, making a general anesthesia. Another point that is not said in the literature, that sometimes if you're doing spinal anesthesia, the ritual spasm may catch over the axis sheath and make your axis sheath withdrawal a problem. So it's beneficial to be general anesthesia unless you have a problem with anesthesia. Don't work without a C-arm and laser in the stone cases. It's never doing a flexible without C-arm, and I don't think that you can fragment the stone without a laser. Care about your ergonomics to save your wrist and elbow and shoulder, well, because after 100 cases, if you are doing a bad ergonomics, you are going to visit your new surgeon. The first step is, as I said, this is flexible, and we are not able to introduce it easily inside the ureter. So we need something to make it easier for us, and this is the axis sheet. But we, not, we are not going to start immediately with insertion of the axis. Usually, uh, is the best case scenario that you start with your semi-rigid, trying to test your ureter, and introducing your flexible guide wire, and seeing if the ureter is hostile or compliant. Because a lot of cases should start and end by inserting a double J, uh, and stop the procedure, because if the ureter is too tight, and you are trying to push the scope hardly, you are going to make a, a, a bad scenario. So as we said, that we, I usually start with doing a semi-rigid, trying to see how tight is the ureter and how compliant is it. Is it going to immediately do flexible or are going to stage it and stent it? So don't forget to counsel your patient about this point. This is a very important and mandatory thing that you say in the counseling that if I found the ureter tight, I'm going to stent you and get home safely. So how we are going to uh, dilate the ureter, sometimes passive dilatation with the scope is enough, and if not, you need to insert the balloon. Uh, it's important that you use the right size balloon. Sometimes it has to be longer than four centimeters, or you are not going to dilate the intramural part well. Use uh, the gorge and uh, increase the pressure up to 20 atmosphere because this is what gives you the good dilatation. After a good balloon dilatation, you start to insert your axis sheath easily, step by step. Stepwise, don't introduce it immediately in one step, like 
you have to go in an interrupted movement, trying to test if the axis is going up easily or not. The ideal position of the axis sheets in the bust was just below the BOJ, but after introducing of the bendable one with the, uh, the soft tip, so you could even go with the axis sheets inside the creases. But if you are using the old one, so take care, it should not go after the BOJ. The size of the axis sheets are different, I think, maybe covered in other lectures. And here are the difficult scenarios you are talking about. So you take care that introducing an axis sheet in a hard way is going to have a, a harsh complication. Sometimes this complication may go smoothly out of the GJ, and sometimes it's going to have a permanent structure or permanent reflux or whatever. The second step after introducing the axis sheet with, is introducing your scope. Usually we held the scope with the dominant hand. So if you are a right hand guy with your right hand, with the, you thumb over the deflection lever, and you use the other non-dominant hand to manage the tip of the scope and to push it forward. And this is the first step: is how to catch it. The first, second step is how you rotate it. So, as we know, we have a two type of rotation with the scope. One is called the macro, and one is called the micro rotation. The macro rotation, while you are holding the scope like this, is in a bonus and spine movement. And the other micro is the one that you push the scope with your other non-dominant hand. So as we see here, and this is one of the pictures that I love, you have to know which side you are walking in. Is it the right side or the left side? And if you are in the right kidney, you should see the calices to the left. If you are in the left kidney, the calices should be to the right. And again, if you are trying to do the movement of rotation, you have, without looking to the picture, to know if it is in the right kidney, it should be spination, if it is in the left kidney, it should be pronation. These are the movements, and the other movement with it, you tip of the other non-dominant hand to introduce the scope forward and backward. So this is the rotation. And as we said, the macro and micro rotation, one with the dominant hand, the other with non-dominant hand. And keep your elbow flexed 30 degrees or 60 degrees, and keep your wrist in a good position because you are having a, a headache of neuralgia for all your uh, uh, joints if you are not having the right ergonomics. After this, and you successfully introduce the scope inside the axis sheet and went up, usually the first place you would find yourself in is the upper calyx or pelvis or ureter. If you went up well, it's the upper calyx. Usually you are going to know this with a T-arm help. If not, and if you're still below, it could be the pelvis or the ureter. Usually we start to going up to the upper calyx as usual. And one of the tricks that you find bubbles that will let you know if it is anterior calyx or posterior calyx, because this is one of the good points in the orientation. And should have at the black triangle in the older scope, it's at 12 o'clock. And what you have to do is to go from the upper calyx down to the middle, down to the lower, and then to the pelvis. This is the schedule that has to be to put in your brain. And you have to be able to know this without using the contrast material. Again, this is the black triangle that we said that this is in the old scope days at the 12 o'clock. And here is a bubble that you should find at the anterior posterior calyx because sometimes you cannot be oriented and maybe you have catches the scope in the opposite way that let you know disoriented. And if you have a stone in the lower bowl. So sometimes you, you are having the, the biggest problem because the lower bowl means that you need to use more deflection with your thumb and with the laser fiber inside your scope, this will be hard to have a good deflection. So if you are able as the first to reposition, make a reposition of the stone inside the pelvis or other calices, if not, take care while inserting the laser fiber inside the scope, it has to be straight. Like putting the laser is it sharp enough to cut the scope from inside and destroy your scope before starting. And this is a big issue. After doing your busting and laser of the stones and suction, you are going to have a, a, a little bit comparison which scope is better. And I think to know this, you have to know what items are you searching for. Is it tip size or shaft size? Is it vision clarity or color perception? Should the deflection with the, an instrument inside and an instrument outside, with it, the durability, is it open or not open or just four hours scope? So these are the items we are going to compare between the scopes. And take care not to damage your scope, either damaging from inside or outside, because from inside, as we said, with an instrument, especially laser, 
want to introduce the laser equipped with the, the, the probe is straight. And from outside, if uh, you are doing a hard deflection, and using deflection too much. And uh, again, there is other uses we could use for the flexible, like this case, when we went from the <laughs>
وهو المشكله في التجاوز المشاعر في الحالات اللي فيها ذهبيه فيها انفكشن هم دول اللي هيحصل فيهم سيناريو الهيماتوما والانفكشن والسبس والحاجات فاحنا خايفين من الكوليكيشن هنا كده دول الهيماتوما والسبس والكيس اللي بيحصل فيها اكتر حاجه كمان فبيس دكتور محمد انا كنت برضه يعني عاوز اناقش حضرتك في السايز اوف سول ايه البارامتر عندنا بالاكسبت اللي احنا انهي سايز اوف سول اكوردنج للجايد لاين اللي احنا المفروض تجو بالاكسبت ويبقى عندنا اذر اوبشن هو المسائل اللي بالذات ان انا متعدد الاختيارات يعني انا ما اقدرش احكم على حد ان الاختيار ده غلط صح بس هي اوبشن زي ما هي وجايد لاينز حاولت وانا سالنا الكلام ده بطريقه خلينا نختار احسن سيناريو للعيان اللي هو يوفر له الوقت والفلوس بس اجين هي الفكره فكره العيان عايز ايه؟ هو عايز الموت سيف بروسيجر ولا عايز الموت سيف فكونسلنج مع العيان لو هو بيخاف كوميونيكيشن ميبي هيختار يزود الخطوات لغايه صرف النص والاثنين صرف لو العيان عايز الموت انفيزيف اند موست افكتيف لو الحصر اثنين اثنين ونص سم احنا هنروح نعمل في سيناريو فليكسيبل لما اخترعوا له اخترعوا له كويس اللي هي بين الواحد و 2 سم اكوردنج تو ذا هاوس فيت اند ذا بوزيشن اوف ذا سول الهاوس فيت ما بيأثرش كتير مع الفليكسيبل لكن البوزيشن بيأثر كتير حاطط في اللور فيلز دي خطوات صعبه لان انت ممكن في الفليكسيبل تبقى صعوبه كلما كانت الانجل لقيت اكيوت فطالما الانجل مش اكيوت طالما الحاطه ما بتكادش 2 سم السيناريو ده هيبقى سيناريو كويس جدا في الفليكسيبل طبعا مش هنخش على حاطه نص نص سم ده كده يعني يعتبر بالنسبه للامكانيات بتاعت مصر يكون شويه لكن من واحد ل 2 سم ده الحجم المعتاد للفليكسيبل في الكيدني ممكن اكتر من كده لو الهاوس فيت بتاع الحصه قليل اه سيف جدا ان تكسر حصه 3 سم في البيربس الهاوس فيت بتاعها 600 و 700 هتلاقيها بتخلص بسهوله طول ما كان الهاوس فيت عالي فمن واحد ل 3 سم الحجم حسب الهاوس فيت وحسب مكان الحصه في الكيدني وبروفايد ان مفيش في احد يحب يسال اتفضل هو يفضل استخدام الوجه عشان نسمع السؤال هو السؤال بيقول ايه سبب الاضطرار ما استخدمتش ده كتير فهو يفضل استخدام استخدامه لاسباب عديده منها انك انت تعرف تخش وتطلع خمس ست مرات وي انتوي منها انك انت بيحسن الاريجيشن لان هو لما بيخلي الوجه يطلع من خلاله كده تخش وجه جديد فيكسب منها ان هو سيفر في زيوز الدوميا عشان انت هتخش تجيب شيبس او دوميا سموث سموث ولكن في بعض الاحيان لو استخدمت الاكسس وعملت دوميا يوتر انت عملت كده سوري فانت ما استخدموش وانت استخدمه زي ما قلت في المحاضره اخش اروح في السيمي ويجد اسست اليوتر بتاعي او اليوتر مش طايق خلاص يبقى انا كده سيف اهو اعمل دايريكشن واحاول ان انت الاكسس دايما كانوا بيقولوا لك فيك حاول ان انت تجيب الاكسس طيبه زيك زيك كده بالراحه ما تخش مره واحده كده ولا تخش